We're here today at DCU's Glasnevin campus to talk to this year's VP at Academic Affairs candidate Callahan Commons. Callahan is running uncontested for the election and we talked to him today about his manifesto and what he will do if he reaches the required number of votes. Hi Cal, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk to us today. No worries. So I was just reading through your manifesto and I saw a couple of points which I found very interesting about your campaign. Um, the first one I saw was uh, your wish to improve careers week. One uh, was by introducing skills workshops such as uh, barista training yeah. to make you more attractable to employers. So would students expect it to be something that would be free or something heavily subsidised that they would expect to uh, pay a small fee for if it was to happen? I would be hoping that it would be free. I'd be hoping my best to get it free. Now it happened. Um, I wouldn't actually know the if it's, if it's, if feasibility of it, but um, I want it to happen, but I hope that it would be free. Um, if it is anything, I imagine one won't cost very much, probably a fibre. But I do think there will be skills that would be beneficial to you anyway. If they cost fibre, I feel like in the long run it will be help, helpful for students, especially for a part time job while you're in college as a, to fund yourself. So that's the kind of the idea I was going with Crazy Week there. The Crazy Week is for, at the moment, it's kind of aimed at when you leave college. But when you're in college, you still also need to be able to fund yourself as well uh, with part time jobs. That is, and that could also potentially go on to a career. Like you might, need, you might have to. Once you leave college and um, go into your field, you might not go straight into it, so you might need to have a part-time job um, for that. So I feel like you have skills that will be worthwhile. So even if there was a small fee, I feel like it will be beneficial, but I'd be hoping that they'd be free. So like you just kind of want to concentrate on improving it in the current situation for students so that they can like grow their skills now, whether than uh, doing it later, like when they leave Yeah, 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 so you have skills when you're ready to go and when you're in college, so both, uh, both of them. Perfect. And uh, another, like, thing I saw which like really stands out to a lot of students is the issue of a 24 hour library during exam season. Yep. Uh, a lot of people have tried bringing it in, uh, like it's been a failure time and time over again, mm. but it's something that students really want to see. So like how do you plan on going about it? How are you going to lobby for a 24 hour library during the, the exam season? I think what the main aim there is, I think it's an overall aim, it will be a gradual thing. So hopefully I want to see if I can't get 24 hour, hour library this year, I want to see it kept going anyway, whoever takes on then after me, but I want to see a gradual improvement. So at the moment, the minimum I want for 24 hour library is that it's open during um, repeats, because during the repeats, the um, library only open from up until about 5 pm every day. So if it's open for 24 hours during the exam, it should be open for 24 hours at least then as well. And that'll be the minimum I want. But overall, I want to work with the library, see what the feasibility is of it. If it's a thing where they don't have the money for fund of, um, funding of the staff to keep it open, uh, see what money we can move around or what we can do about it. But the minimum I want is to have it open during repeats, if not 24 hours all the time. And uh, another one I saw, which was like, it's a, a big issue for a lot of students, is the CA feedback. You were saying, which is true, that a lot of students get their feedback when they go on to their next CA. Mm -hmm. And uh, how much of a priority is this for you to make sure that they get this feedback? Quicker. I think it's so important because I found this myself and my classmates said to me as well that a lot of our we it's it's science we have lab reports. So if you spent one lab report and by the time you spent the second one, you still haven't got the first one back. So that means your first two could be completely wrong. So I think it's really important to work with um lecturers and PhD students who are correcting them a lot of time to see what point we get the process to be set up that we can get them back free further. Because um my main passion there are access and quality of education. And the quality of education can only improve by the the closing the feedback loop. So I think that's so important. And I have to say, I've already discussed this with uh, this year, I've been in Science and Health Baccalaureate, I've been on uh, um, meetings with uh, the lecturers, and it has been something that I brought up uh, this year. And I think there has been a few more improvements on it, they've been working on it. But it was hearing that students want them quicker has kind of encouraged them to do it. So I think it's making that across the board. So I've already kind of uh, made the start with science, but I want to make it across the board at all faculties. And just finally, the impression I got from your manifesto is that you want to bring the idea of this progressive university forward, whether that be through your idea of a book sale or swap, mm -hmm. uh, reaching out to students who, who plan to drop out and show them other options, and uh, just a general kind of like reaching out to students and making it more progressive. Yep. Um, do you plan to work with other, if you get the position, do you plan to work with other uh, VPs and other members of the SU? Would this be a priority to make it a progressive college? I think so, I think what, like, one thing this year I've seen maybe not progressive but engaging students as well giving students what they want not just what uh, the student union thinks they want maybe like these are things that i'm on my manifesto is what uh, my classmates have said to me or people i know they're like this is what i want to see done and that's what the union should be doing rather than like this would be a great campaign or great idea but it may not be you might be great in a minority of people who actually need that but rather than um, things that will affect all the students over 
obviously you do need hot run campaigns for the minority as well and make, make everyone kind of equal but I think need needs to be something done for everyone so like the book sale everyone can buy books or some so if you can do book, uh, book swap sale they're helping every student so that would be something I want to do and yeah as you said they work with other VPs um, one, one of the other things on my manifesto was having like uh, well-being uh, workshops around exam times so that'd be in close cooperation with the VP for welfare and quality and there's, there's other stuff as well like placement is very much an educational one so working with the VP for placement and education there so yeah Perfect. Well, that's all the questions I have today. So thanks a million for coming in to talk to us. No worries, Rob. Thank you. So that's it from this year's VP Academic Affairs candidate, Callaghan Commons. Make sure to follow DCU TV News to keep up to date with this year's 2018 DCU SU elections. And don't forget to vote from Wednesday the 7th of March to Friday the 9th of March. Colin McCahey, DCU TV News.